Hi, it's Village in Motion time this morning. I am Clint Lambert, the host today, and we have with us this morning two people from the <clears throat> Resident Council Dining Services Committee. Half, first of all, Ivan Ives, who is the council liaison to the Dining Services Committee, and we have Joe Kyle, who is the chairman of the Dining Services Committee for the Resident Council. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Glad Thank to you. have both of you with us this morning. Glad to be here. Ivan, you are the council liaison to the dining services. What does that entail? Basically, just trying to do the communication between the, uh, the committee itself and the council. Anything that needs to go back mm -hmm. and forth, what the council is interested in, or the, the subjects that the committee is uh, looking at and would provide recommendations to the council for their consideration. Okay. So you are truly a liaison. You yeah, truly you. get information from one and take it to the other. <laughs> Play Western Union. Now. There you go. <laughs> well, he uh, he's holding my hand actually. Oh, okay. actually. <laughs> so, so what what do you see him doing, Joe? Well, like I say, he uh, he is uh, brings the peaceful, calm plains of Montana approach to uh, county counteract the city kid that I am, I guess. <laughs> okay. And I get into trouble, he bails me out. Uh, okay. Yeah. But that's, it's been a good team, a good, good. good working relationship. Joe, you have been the chairman for what, two years now? No, just one year. Just one year on dining service. But I have been on the committee for about five years. Okay. All right. That's reason I was confused in regards no, right, to Right. I have been around okay. it a while. Okay. And, and <clears throat> Ivan, you have been liaison for Okay. This is the second year. This I was the on the year. committee for one year before. Okay. So about three years have been working. Okay. And how many people are on the committee with you? We have a little more than 20. It's a big committee, uh, but they're pretty active okay. and faithful in attendance, and uh, we couldn't get the job done without their help. When you say get the job done, you got 20 people, what does the job entail? Well, um, it, it depends in part on the month, like okay. coming up in October, we meet on the second Thursday. Okay. But depending on the month, that can be the eighth day of the month. Mm -hmm. And that means that um, uh, Phyllis in Dining Services has to uh, put the uh, cards together, get all that transcribed, put on a, a spreadsheet, hard copy out to uh, all of us. Then the subcommittee chairs have to get together, meet with their subcommittees in each of the dining rooms, uh, the three major dining rooms in Independent Living plus uh, Garden Ridge. And then they need to prepare uh, reports and send them to uh, Jenny Oler, who's our secretary. And then she has to prepare a packet to get out to us. And in a month like October, all that has to be done in a very few days. And it cannot be done without sometimes overtime on the part of Phyllis and the rest of us. I'm going to slow you down here one second. That's a heck of a lot of information right there that has to transpire. <laughs> You have, what I'm hearing you say, you've got 20 people, you've got three committees within those three uh, three subcommittees? Four, uh, actually. Well, actually, we have four. Okay, um, what do you have? Uh, one for each of the uh, dining rooms and independent living, and one for uh, this year, I think it's beginning, um, at least we have resurrected it, one for um, uh, Garden Ridge. Okay. And then in addition to that, we have what we call a menu harmonization committee. That's really, um, uh, a title of a committee, their job is to um, try to be sure that um, information uh, regarding the, what's in the food, uh, the, the people of inter have a great interest in what's in the food, mm -hmm. that um, what information we get is accurate, is timely, uh, and that's their job, and okay. uh, they've been uh, doing a hard, uh, hard work with that. And then the other, it's sort of an informal committee of one, uh, Marie Lee has been very interested in acoustical issues and uh, the difficulty of hearing that some of us have. In, especially in the public spaces like the dining rooms. Okay. And uh, so we're focused on that issue as well. Okay, so four committees, 20 people, got them divided up in those different committees, yeah. the subcommittees. Um, and then you have Marie Lee doing her hearing thing, which has really been wonderful. Yes, I mean, she's, she's done a superb hard job with her hearing support groups and everything. <clears throat> The people on the subcommittee, they're appointed by you as chair? 
Uh, no, they, uh, they're self-appoint. If, if okay. w what we do at the beginning of the year is to ask uh, if you primarily uh, eat in Woodland Skies or in the Jefferson or in Fireside or in the cafe, mm -hmm. and many residents here uh, predominantly eat in one of those four, mm -hmm. then uh, you would be most knowledgeable and your information, your input would be most useful if you were serving on one of those uh, subcommittees. Oh, okay. And uh, we have um, chairs for each of those committees, um, Anna Dean and uh, Susan Gerhard, um, Ellen Sinclair, Barbara Kalki, uh, and Andrews. Um, and uh, the, the dietary committee, the uh, menu harmonization, that was um, uh, Jim Wamsler and uh, Zoe Parker. Okay. And all these folks are very busy and very helpful. Yes. So they all work together. They talk about what's going on in dining services within their yes. respective dining rooms, uh, restaurants as we call them these days, or cafe. Yeah, they, they, they typically meet um, amongst themselves mm -hmm. and sometimes at that same time with the dining room manager, the person who is in charge of the front of the house, what we all see, okay. and also with the chef responsible for that dining room, that's the back of the house as it is typically called. So each month they meet with those two individuals? Yes, uh, okay. that's right. As and, well as themselves. And, and they, uh, all of them have uh, access to the uh, comment cards for that dining room for that month or okay. that, that time period. And they discuss issues. Um, uh, and uh, what uh, are the potential resolutions, what are the potential possibilities, uh, some of the things we can fix, some of the things maybe we, uh, we can't fix. Okay. Uh, when we get, and this is a very common example, uh, one comment card says the beans are too hard, they're not cooked. <laughs> the, the next, next comment card says <laughs> the beans are too mushy. Yes. Uh, yes. Too, uh, well, that's how, how we're going to, or too, too much salt, or right. too much seasoning, too little seasoning. Mm -hmm. uh, these matters that have a good bit to do with personal preference and yeah. personal taste, uh, uh, the chefs try very hard to strike sort of down the middle. Okay. Uh, and but it's uh, kind of like the rest of America, always split, right? Yeah, it's 50-50 it yeah. almost it's in not, regards not to anything. It's easy to please everybody all yeah. the time. Right. That's yeah. On any, yeah. about any given month, we'll probably get on order of about 600 comment cards. I was going to ask that about that. Come in. That's overall, right? Overall, and yeah. then divide those up so that they, as the subcommittees meet with that, uh, uh, dining room. Mm -hmm. They look at the ones specifically from that area and many times the uh, manager and the executive chef have already addressed the issues by the time that we actually get to okay. meet them. So they're quite responsive uh, on the, to the cards. Speaking of comment cards, they, they come in, we fill the comment card out, we put mm -hmm. it in the box, okay, yeah. or we hand mm -hmm. it to the manager or right. whatever, right? Yeah. That comment card then goes to whom? It is uh, then in the dining room, one of the people takes uh, to put it on a kind of a spreadsheet, so they have that. Okay, within and the dining then, room. Yeah, and then th those are fed into the dining service office. Okay. And from mm -hmm. there, they, then Phyllis in the dining service office distributes to the appropriate people, so mm -hmm. they have So she, she goes over them, types them out, so they're readable? Uh, that's right. And that's that right. information then comes to? Right back to the dining services and it goes to each of the subcommittees, right? That's right. Okay, and That's then right. they discuss what's They discuss been. the issues that um, uh, and uh, most of the cards are signed. Okay. Uh, that's not a requirement, but it's certainly a preference because right. if we know or if the chef or if the dining room manager knows that such and such has a problem, that mm -hmm. um, then they can approach them directly and okay. uh, did we get it resolved and uh, how could we do it differently the next time and all this sort of thing, which you can't do if you don't know who wrote the card. In regards to resolution, does something get resolved in a day, a week, a month, or what? How long does it typically take to get some of these issues resolved? Well, sometimes they can be uh, resolved right away. If okay. if uh, you are not satisfied with the entree, it is not what you expected. Right. Uh, and if you contact someone right then, um, sometimes your server, sometimes the dining room manager, mm -hmm. then they'll replace the entree. Okay. Uh, another of the same that's uh, better, a steak that is not gristle and right. so forth, mm -hmm. or maybe switch to another entree. Um, or if there are particular things they'd like to have on the menu, mm -hmm. that might uh, need to wait until the next cycle of ah, the yeah, So that that's may true. take a month or two, depending on what the cycle is in that particular dining room. With the cycles, and, and we have the menu cycles now, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What's the length of a cycle with a menu? 
to vary from dining room to dining room? Or well, in it, Woodlands, guys, it's a month. It's a month? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so every month, then the entire menu changes, right? No, there right. are changes to it. Oh, changes. There are changes to it. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and Woodland Skies, I know they do the weekly specials, and that mm -hmm. changes every week. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know at Fireside they do a daily special that changes every day. That's mm -hmm. not reflected anywhere yeah. other than at the dining room. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't know until you get there yeah. what, what's going yeah. on. Um, does, Jefferson doesn't have specials, they just do their regular thing, right? They kind of uh, rotate on a weekly type of basis. Okay. Uh, they basically have about a, a week's menu and that kind of repeats. Uh, so okay. each of them rotate in one way or another. All right. Yeah. And, and yes. I, it, we tend, as a matter of habit, or a matter of preference, or maybe because it's the closest one and maybe right. mobility makes it preferable to eat here, but we are encouraged to eat in any of the three dining rooms. Right. And there are times when uh, I'm a fond, fond of Mexican, uh, uh, they don't do much in Woodland Skies, never have. I right. uh, have a frequent conversation with uh, Chef Mark about that, but they did Mexican last week in uh, Jefferson. I went mm -hmm. over to Jefferson. Sure. And uh, the idea is not to try to have three dining rooms providing oh, the same food, right. um, mm -hmm. but rather choices. And sometimes flavors are a little different. Maybe this uh, one soup is uh, like so here, but a little different over there. And uh, that, that's, that's, uh, there's, that's a positive side to that, mm -hmm. and not, not so well, it's what's wrong here. But. Does Dining Services Committee have any input in regards to that of saying, you know, the residents, you know, we, we really need to have uh, more differences as opposed to more similarities or um, things need to be rotated more often than they are rotated. Uh, this dining services. Well, there's a couple of, of a couple of different ways. One is with the subcommittee meeting with the uh -huh. uh, manager and the okay. uh, executive chef. It can happen at that level. Okay. It can also happen as we talk in uh, the full committee, mm -hmm. and we have the dining staff there. Yeah, uh, so that can also make the impact or change so it's, it's, at it's that it's point. it's imperative on us then to, to make sure we fill out karmic cards in regards if we desire yes, to have it, that. That's really a good source of information we appreciate. And, okay. and uh, some people prefer to deal directly with a manager and that's that's useful. They keep t uh, keep tabs of, of all that sort of information. Okay. But I, I can't help but uh, uh, grin slightly uh, that one of the first things that Ivan told me when I took over the, uh, the imaginary gavel for this job is that <laughs> remember Joe, so, uh, yes, is an advisory committee. <laughs> so um, uh, we advise, yes. and uh, if somebody else consents, right. uh, that's fine. But right. uh, more seriously, I, th I think uh, management does uh, try very hard to be responsible, be responsive to uh, uh, the preferences of, uh, of the residents within reasons. Uh, but they can only be responsive if we let them know what our desires are. That's right. Yeah. That's right. If, yeah, I mean, from yeah opinion, it has yeah. to start there. You know, I've been uh, really impressed with uh, how versatile they are. And, okay, if that didn't work, fine, we'll try something else. And they have no problem with that. So I, I appreciate their willingness to uh, adjust. Well, we sometimes get um, suggestions. This may have been tongue-in-cheek, but I don't think so. Several months ago, one of the comment cards complained that we did not have 24-hour room service mm. on the campus. Okay. Um, and uh, that uh, a steak at 4 a.m. was not available. Right. And that, that was a serious flaw. Um, um, there are obviously some things that just can't be done. Right. Um, uh, but, but you just brought up something, though, in the fact of wanting certain things at certain times, certain places, et cetera. If we do not, those of us that live in independent living got tired of eating in independent living. Can we go over to Garden Ridge? I know that some of the Garden Ridge people come over to Fireside or the cafe. Yes. I've, I've noticed that. Yes. Uh, can we go over there and eat? Or you know? No, no. You you are free if you have a spouse or you a friend, uh, somebody on your floor that uh, you were pals with. Now they've gone over there for health reasons, mm -hmm. and if you want to join them, uh, or if they want to join you, all that's uh, entirely up to you. But it wouldn't be something where you would just individually just go over there whether you had somebody there or not. Um, I don't know that that happens, but yes, it could happen. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I know that people from over there come over. Yeah. I mean, yeah. People from Garden Ridge come over to yeah. independent living and yeah. eat without mm -hmm. eating with right. someone right. else. I mean, that's right. Yeah, well, we, we're no, hoping that uh, on the independent living side, be, between three dining rooms, a cafe, and a bistro, mm -hmm. that somewhere in there we could exactly. find yeah. what sure. okay. would satisfy. Yeah. 
You mentioned the, the different dining venues that we have and all five of them in independent living and, and the one in, in Garden Ridge. The cafe, the supervision of the cafe, the input to the cafe, there is a subcommittee? For the yes. Specific. This year we, uh, at, at uh, request of folks that eat over there in, guard, in, in the fireside and or the cafe, said that there there's one kitchen that serves both, mm -hmm. but the flavor of the, the environment, the right. atmosphere is different, and the, uh, it would be wise if we could get input separately. And mm -hmm. so we did that this year, and oh, we okay. have uh, a cafe committee and a, a fireside dining room committee, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we receive input from both of those committees every month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And the, the way it is being served where you have the fireside that's basically sit down and be served, mm -hmm. the cafe basically a buffet style and whatnot. So they're different mm -hmm. things. Just the traffic control in yeah. either one is different. Sure. So. Okay. The committee doesn't just do menus and, and comment cards and meetings. You guys do some other things too, right? You're looking at... Yeah. It acoustics? Um. Yes, we, uh, our committee this year has been focused uh, particularly on um, two or maybe three issues um, that fit within the goals but are more, uh, more broadly based, I think. And one of them is the issue of acoustics, uh, the ability, 75% uh, of us of our age group have lost some of their hearing, sometimes a great deal of it. And that creates problems, especially in the group setting, in a big room where there's reverberation, echoes, mm -hmm. and all of that. And uh, so we're asking, uh, and we're glad to know that management is included in the uh, the renovations that are underway, or mm -hmm. will soon be underway, generally over at the fireside. Oh, okay. uh, we'll include an acoustical report from a professional, and we'll presumably make some recommendations. And we, the Dining Services Committee, are going to recommend to the council that they pay attention to that uh, report oh, and good. recommend to management that if there's some interesting, some cost-effective, some reasonable recommendations, right. that, uh, that management uh, implement those. And that um, they be, um, where appropriate, um, uh, applied in the other uh, two major venues in Hunters Crossing and uh, Villa Square. So then we should be better able to hear our uh, table mates then. That's the idea. Okay, that, that, in regards that, to it. Yeah, you see it because there's always requests, especially I see it in, in Woodland Skies where I said we appreciate having more uh, two top or four top mm -hmm. tables. Right. But there are some folks that like to be in a group and so right. you have a few that can handle six or seven. Right. But a lot of times the smaller tables, it's easier oh, it's much for easier. conversation. Much easier. Yeah. It's more difficult uh, in Jefferson. Simply there, how do you handle 500 people? Right, and, exactly. and so you can't have too many small <laughs> tables. <laughs> so each location is, is uh, has its own nature. Yeah, and right. There's an atmosphere in each one of us. It's, yeah, a, it's a culture in each one, it right. seems like, I mean, almost. It, it, he's mentioning 500. I, it, it, this is an opening. To, uh, we have to serve 1,500 meals a day, 45,000 meals a month. Um, wow. In the, uh, all, all of the dining rooms. Um, so, so dining service, I mean, the, the kitchens, the dining services, dining services, period. It's a serves big operation. 50, serves 1,500 meals a day? Yeah, that's right. That's wow. Right. And, and what makes it interesting and difficult and a challenge for the dining services for the for the mm -hmm. uh, the chefs is that uh, we don't know uh, where those 1,500 people are going to go. Right. Are they all going to go to Woodland Skies tonight? <laughs> now, that doesn't happen, of course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the past experience will tell them a great deal. But generally, uh, they don't know specifically. Mm -hmm. right. That creates problems for the for the kitchen. And more than that, we have a wide uh, selection of entrees that are mm -hmm. available. I mean, we don't know in the kitchen right. well, what, who's going to order what. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, some of them take more time to prepare. Uh, you can do um, uh, a salmon, a piece of salmon in a very short period of time, maybe something else is going to take several minutes. All of this is going to the same table, right. and everybody wants to be served their entree at the same time. <laughs> um, it's it's a really almost a miracle of what uh, what can be yeah. done, since they don't have um, a lot of the advantage of, mm -hmm. of, a, um, uh, of a professional restaurant. Right. Uh, uh, but 
that we, we try to emulate it, but it's, it's difficult. Exactly. I mean, I used to laugh at my mother all the time. I mean, I always knew if the, if the dinner was really going to be good if the bread was not cooked, you know, it was burnt. Yeah. I mean, because she could not figure out all, all, everything at one time yeah. to get it all out together. Right. She would yeah. invariably burn the bread if everything else was excellent. So. Yeah. Now we do have in the woods, or Woodland Skies and in Fireside, the use of some of the reservation system to help give some idea mm -hmm. and to spread people out. But it's always the balance, okay, how many do you, of the seats do you hold for reserve and how much do you provide just regular walk-in? Exactly. And so they're on that balance. They're, they're uh, always on a tightrope in regards to that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But with that, you, you mentioned the number of people. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys are involved with with the Dining Services Committee, but the, the number of people I understand that's going to Jefferson has increased tremendously over the last two months, and I think a lot of it has to do with, with fireside renovations and what's yeah. going on with that. Yeah. <clears throat> I understand that they're now down to doing uh, stars or whatever on people's hands uh, prior to them going in to try to expedite things? Have you heard? Have you I'm not familiar with the. Oh, okay. uh, that is, that is. Depends an awful lot uh, on when you decide you want to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, for in the early portions at Jefferson, the seating can be done rather easily. And that's kind of true of all the restaurants, yeah. right? And once you fill that up, then you can figure it's going to be about an hour mm -hmm. before those seats open up again. Okay. So you can kind of think, okay, when do you want to eat and are you going to have to wait or right. do you want to mm -hmm. just wait a little bit and go a little later? But you can kind of figure out what time of day works best for you. Right. Is, um, again, I, if we wanted to eat at 3.30 or at 9.30, we could solve the problem. Right. Uh, <laughs> but nobody wants to do that. Yeah. And we don't have servers available at 3.30 because they're in school. Oh, right. And we don't have servers available at 8.30 or 9 because they are students living at home. They've got to do their homework and what have you. And, and they're promised, uh, the parents are promised when they come to work here that right. they're going to be released around 8 o'clock and right. not, not later. Right. So we have a pretty uh, compressed section. And we've changed the dining system in recent years uh, to offer more choices. Mm -hmm. Again, this is responding to a changing population. Right. When uh, this place was built 20 years ago, or designed 20 years ago, built 15 years ago, why, um, the choices uh, uh, were not that were offered by the Erickson complex weren't what they are today. Yeah, much different. The more choices, yeah. uh, the more complex that it becomes in the kitchen, right. the harder it is to uh, put it all together and uh, makes it more difficult to um, uh, serve, especially when you have a compressed uh, period of time, right. roughly four to six, right. uh, to, to feed mm -hmm. a, a big population. Yeah. Joe, you, you mentioned the comment cards and all the things the committee does with, with uh, looking at those and making recommendations and, and advising. You've got acoustics going on, a project with that. Any other items that the committee's addressing? Well, we're interested in also the, the diet. Um, uh, we have a small population here um, that have serious allergy responses if they get the wrong foods. Oh peanuts and right. um, uh, gluten and, and, and so forth. But beyond that, we have a very large population of folks that have uh, heart problems, high blood pressure, um, um, diabetes or mm. pre-diabetes, right. and they need to know uh, what's in uh, the food, what they, uh, if they don't have the information, they can't avoid it. So they need to know the nutritional value uh, and, right, and right. those things, right? In independent living residents are responsible for knowing what they can eat right. and what they shouldn't eat. Um, if they need help on that, by the way, uh, we have dietitians on campus who are assigned to help help the assisted living population. But these folks are available for an individual con, uh, consultation. Mm -hmm. uh, they're professionals, and that's a fee for service uh, okay. to independent living people. But arrange through the dining services office if you need or if you want uh, uh, sit down face to face okay. with a dietitian. That can be done here on campus. Okay. But what's happening? now, however, is that we have a dietitian uh, in the corporate office that will help uh, the independent living population oh. across the whole uh, Erickson uh, complex. Okay. And that's a good move, and we're very happy to see that, and we're going to recommend that the council um, applaud it. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, we need um, uh, to know a little more about what the scope of work will be for that person and what kind of support they will have, what sort of software, what sort of IT input, because information 
in the diet realm can change almost from day to right. day to day, and we need today to know what's on the menu tonight so I can know whether I can eat it or not, um, or if I can eat it, a big portion, regular or small or whatever, and information for today that comes to me tomorrow is no help. Yeah. Uh, it's like a weather report. Um, it better the come day, day, <laughs> the day, a day after weather report is no report at all. And so what sort of support that that person in, in, uh, in Baltimore will have is quite important, I right. think. And our committee has done a really good job, um, uh, Jim and Zoe in particular, in documenting that information available on my uh, our net nutrition, mm -hmm. my nutrition, my nutrition right. um, sometimes is out of date, uh, incomplete, mm -hmm. uh, inaccurate. Um, and I don't think that's willful or deliberate in any way, right. but rather um, maybe we just don't have the uh, uh, the support staff to get that all inputted. It's something, it's something that needs attention. Right, and and uh, hopefully the person that's going to take that position in Baltimore will uh, uh, have the desire and the means to right. um, improve uh, and give us a better and more timely uh, set of uh, information. It's I'm not sure that, if every, that helps everybody. Yeah. And I, I, th I applaud the committee for taking that on. I'm not sure everybody understands what my nutrition is, and just we, we've got a minute left here. <clears throat> Yeah, and my nutrition is is online. Yes. Uh, so you have to go online on on the computer. The to do village that. bridge, you can get at it from okay. the, from there. All right. Yeah. And we can find everything about. It, that, well, that's that's the point. Yeah. The the, the, the uh, presumption is everything is there, that it is accurate, that mm -hmm. it is timely, uh, and um, complete. Um, and uh, my committee has uh, repeatedly in conversations in our committee meetings with, uh, with Michael uh, pointed out that uh, it doesn't, that isn't always quite the case. And uh, uh, Michael's best efforts um, uh, don't quite get it done. And, and again, I say I, I, don't, I don't see any serious problem here. Simply we need some probably support staff to, mm -hmm. to help him out. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. it, in theory, it's all there. In practice, okay. it isn't. Yeah, right. and sometimes they, they've got a piece. They have the, the recipe bank that they mm -hmm. have with about right. 5,000 recipes and whatnot. And it is the one that's on my nutrition, the recipe that they're using mm -hmm. for that, because that, yeah. okay. that can make a difference. Right. So exactly. How do we get those together closely? Okay. So. Anything we can do to help city. Anyway. Very good. Well, gentlemen, thank you very, very much. It's been Glad very be educational and, and very enlightening in regards to talking about the Dining Services yeah. and Dining Services Committee and the liaison of the committee with the council, and uh, greatly appreciate it. And, mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully we'll just all keep on eating and enjoying. Yeah, yeah. we've been yeah. doing it quite well up to this <laughs> time. Some of us have been doing it yeah. better than others. Right? <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody eats. There you go. Everybody eats, yeah. right. Very good. Well, again, thank you for being with us. Right. Folks, don't go away. We've got a roll in here coming in here for a couple of seconds, and I'll be back and talk about some announcements we've got. Stay tuned.